I wanted to record a master class, this is how I call it, with different students. You will see inside the video professional traders, so full time traders, traders who make four to five figures on a day. You will see also beginners and you will see also intermediate. We're going to review together their fears, their emotions, how emotions hijack often their trading, and why emotions dictate often the decision that you're doing in trading. I invite you to watch it till the end. Also, if you want to reach out to me for further questions or you would like that I cover something in the new videos, reach out to team at jtrader.co. Put a like, enjoy the video, and see you next time. So good morning, traders. Uh, today we're going to have a special class. We're going to call it Mentoring um, Webinar on Risk Management, but mostly covering instead of, you know, where to apply the stop, calculate the risk reward ratio, where to trail, uh, how to divide your asset allocation. We're going to talk more about the discipline, the fear, your emotion in tradings. And uh, you can see that we have two major report cards. One is called the report card and one is called uh, the checklist. So two files that you can download in mentoring. Um, the point of this is to keep yourself accountable. So by doing this exercise every day, for example, the report card, you can put over there your trading technically. You can put there your trading by the point of view emotionally about the performance. So you can evaluate yourself. And then, of course, you have to compare, let's say, the first month of mentoring with the second or third or fourth month of mentoring if you are actually improving. You will see some, um, I would say, some uh, uh, possibly uh, errors that you will still continue to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up now one report card. I receive many over here, almost every day. I would like to to see if there's somebody first of all that today would like to speak so that we can interact okay uh philippe would you like to to discuss a few things with me I, yeah for sure okay so first of all good morning and thank you so uh i always analyze uh during the weekend your performance in this case is trading so we can see that you have no essential big problems over here um understanding and interpreting the market. The setups are from the playbook. The risk is respected. The stop loss almost respected always. The target is respected. So this is pretty good. And uh, also the second part over here, you have no essentially big anticipation entries, no oversize, no following alerts, no uh, chase price. So, uh, you understand how trading is going. You understand the patterns. You studied a lot of work that you did on annotation, retrading, looking at your screen really paid off. Then yeah. we have to look also this part. Uh, sorry, any any question about that? No, no, no. Okay. Then we have the second part, okay? And we can ask why I'm still not successful as I would like even if my report card, even if I take the correct setup, I respect the rules and everything. Why my curve is not like, you know, uh, simply going parabolic. And what we need to improve almost often is in this, uh, in this, uh, uh, I would say, a template. Another thing is that even if we do everything correctly, it takes time to build confidence. And that's a big part in trading. Doesn't need, there's not written anywhere that you have to get confidence in one year. Sometimes it can take two or three years. Even talking, you know, with other uh, mentors, uh, generally it takes two to three years to form a trader. Want to master trading? Join us for a three days live seminar in New York and Denver on stocks and futures. This is going to be for beginners and experienced traders. You'll learn how I do my pre-market plan, how I analyze the market, price action, how we trade, so you get mentored by me. It's going to be interactive. 
It's going to be an amazing community over there where you can share, learn, and evolve. Remember, sign up early because seats are running fast. What I believe is the really the, the critical year. The first year is generally the year that you're stopping to lose and some traders become consistent because they're fast. Some traders may take more time. So maybe they're a little bit of green, a little bit of red. So like they're like break even. The important thing is that you continue to work and even improve with time. Now, emotions over here, you can see that you are confident. You have patience, pretty precise, not always, at least knowing that you're report cards. Uh, you're not focused on a PL. You shouldn't be focused on the PL because you don't need actually to look at the money. It doesn't know uh, kind of any clue, technically, point. But event trading is something that happens, and a lot of traders have big time um, stopping to revenge. So when we have good days, everything works when we have a bad day and we started to see let's say some possible revenge this could lead to really disastrous day no over trading no distraction uh stress over here no greedy no so if you have to i would say gave um a summary of um of what are your main errors? What would you say? Uh, I would you say, say you think you wanna you real you really wanna change. Yeah, so I would say Jay that my main issue is uh, executing uh, without a proper setup, um, especially uh, at the gate. I think. Um, my my main errors come at the gate because sometimes I am way too focused on the on the book map, for example. So I sometimes I don't know see an inverted cop with some li with some liquidity up, and I say, okay, yeah, that's that's a short. But if th then I look at the at the chart, there is not a pattern, you know. So uh, I think. I have to, for sure, uh, do less in order to to win more. It's kind of counterintuitive, but that's for me. That's my my main issue. Okay, so a good point is to state out what you need to improve, and you already know what you have to improve. Um, some days you trade good, some days you don't trade it good. Um, I believe that practice and experience will really change you and that's for me is important that you don't stop studying review your charts daily because it's like going to school you need this every single day it's not that oh i started to see a little bit of consistency let's stop it no you actually need to continue and um you will get better there's a practice that i suggest to do is the one of recording your screen and looking at how you trade it in live and then talking to yourself when you rewatch it and explain to yourself why you did that or why, for example, you missed a trade. It, you really start to understand and learn more from yourself. No, and uh, I am I am doing that, Jay. I, I'm recording my screen. Uh... I don't know why, like at the gate, especially the first few minutes, like, I don't know, I, I have maybe way too much anxiety and desire to to press buttons, you know, and uh, sometimes I think, okay, if there's not like a super clear A plus setup at the gate, when you have like a very strong level to risk off, uh, for me, I think it would be better just, you know, don't look for three minutes. And, and then build from that because most of the times I have to, uh, I always start the day with, uh, I don't know, minus one, minus two hours. And I, then I have to, uh, to fight a lot in order to, to go, 
to go to green again. So yeah, that's for sure. Also, a thing that I need to improve. Uh, I want to share something. So one second, I will share over here. Welcome with us, with us, John. Thank you. I got so consumed. <laughs> I was trading. I lost a little track of time. So the the easy setups are not the one that we have at the gate, or at least not everybody will trade in the same way. If we take, for example, Todd, Fabien, Philippe, they will trade each one differently. You can learn the price action. You can learn the same order flow. I mean, price action or the flow is universal. The chart patterns are universal. When you learn a double bottom, a double top, a wedge, a rejection, a bounce, they're universal. But the style of trading is something personal. Uh, I can tell you that there are a lot of traders that do a lot of um, work to trade the open, but they're still not good to trade open. And not everybody has to trade actually the open. Just look at this example. This is on Tesla, but could have been on a small cap, some future, whatever. And we can see here in open, we have essentially what? Like an FFT, right? So mm -hmm. it goes up, it breaks, and at only this point, we know that this is an FFT. And it can still bounce in place. So let's say we go long, it comes up, comes down, we stop, we have to reverse. There's a lot to do over here. While the, the easiest thing in this case would be or simply when it's coming down to wait you know for a first pullback in anime or even better looking for a key level looking to trade this zone over here and then taking your short so this comes to the point of what is your playbook how you manage to have always that high win rate and this you can do by tracking, by analyzing the market, and looking at the setup and discussing the setups with me. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I just sent uh, my two charts of today where I made the exact same error on Tesla at the gate. And then I was able to catch a good move in SPY. But for me, that's, that's like the frustrating part, you know, like... That first few minutes are costing me uh, a lot, and if you see, we have a bullish a bullish cross already on the J lines, and I wrote in my plan, I want to go long, and I just like was very consuming the book map, and I said, okay, sure, and went against my plan above the. Don't use much the... book map. Book map has something that has to do give you a daily confirmation. Let's say the confirmation that you should be only looking at book map is this. I see a reversal candle at a key level. Book map is over here. Okay, let me take the short. I see, make an example. A J lines and a VWAP over here. There's a confluence. There's book map over here. Okay, let me get the trade. Not because I have a heat map. I'm longing over here. If I have a heat map, I short over here. Personally, buddy, it's uh, not the proper way to use it. Yeah. So first yeah. it's a chart, and then comes the order flow. I prefer if you have to do this, then you don't use order flow. Yeah, got you. Okay. And in this case, don't have FOMO. <laughs> don't pure, pure. Because you already understand that. Trading the open, you're losing. So in your mind, I would be tired to always do the same errors and see that even on the days that I do good, I'm still not green trading the open. So my mind would simply avoid. If I yeah. had a bad date with a girl, I brought her out and she puked on me. <laughs> I don't think the day after or the day after I will still call her to go out with R. What do you think? No, uh, absolutely. <laughs> I remember that at one time I borrowed this scooter of mine to a friend. It was a female. That's why I gave her. She broke the scooter. And when I went to get her, because we, I found her around the city, 
Then I had to drag it home. I was very young, 14, and I had to push in an uphill for like three kilometers. That color of the scooter is purple. I started to hate purple and all the scooters for a lot of time because something that really damages me, I am trying to push those things away from me. So if something like this you see in your stats doesn't work, don't trade it. Maybe for Tibor, maybe for uh, Fabian, it's working, but doesn't mean it's going to work for me as well. And that's the reason why I tell you form a playbook, something that out of the setups we trade, you can see that you have a good read, you can trade good. Yeah, you you, you know what's uh, like make me uh, doubt about that, Jay, is that when I look at my stats, uh, like when the market was strong and with a nice uh, brief, uh, I was making the most of my money at the gate on the first 15 minutes. But after the the, the brief and the market start to, to get uh, weak, uh, I start losing at the gate. So yeah, just to like thinking out loud, uh, maybe just until the market is not strong again, maybe avoiding the open or if I... Avoid that first three or four minutes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, like this example over here, October 23rd. Yeah, hmm. exactly. The okay, same. and then this trading later, you did a good job. So it's, and I see a lot of your trades. Okay, sometimes you take the open good, but I wouldn't stick to that. Give a little bit of time. Don't be under pressure when you trade like this over here. Yeah. <laughs> same trade of today. Yeah, the same one. Exactly. Wait. Okay. Wait. Yeah. All right. Thank you, buddy, for uh, participating. No, thanks for the feedback, Jay. Uh, anybody who would like to um, who would like to talk or share some of his errors? I'll go. Good morning, Todd. Morning, Jay. So what is that you feel you have to improve the most? What is that you think is uh, your main error? I think it's patience. It's mm -hmm. patience to wait for the A plus setup. It's waiting to so that I don't take profits too early. And it's the patience to follow the game plan. Uh, can I ask you something? In the in your life, uh, are you patient as person? No. 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 You look like a calm and, per, uh, I would say, patient person. Uh, maybe in my personal life. Okay. 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 So uh, these traders, I, I see John sees a little bit of himself in these, in these charts. Um, these traders is a type of trader that is not for everybody. Reminds me a lot of Eric H. and Kyle. Kyle DC uh, or of Calfred. So <clears throat> a lot of recycling and scalping, which for many traders is good. So these are some trades that, for example, uh, Todd takes. Okay. So as I was saying, a lot of scalping that I see from Kyle, that I see from uh, John S. now. I uh, saw so from Eric Cates, Carford, and so on. Uh, if we have to Think about why you're not patient. What are you thinking when you're trading? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's like from from my past history, right? I feel like I should be doing something. I should be working for the trade instead of the trade working for me. And you feel uh, pressure like you have to bring results? Yeah. Okay. Uh, because you're doing this since a long time, right? couple of years yeah okay uh so one part is normal you are um competitive you want to feel successful it's a um we say a satisfaction for yourself to show also the people that you have around that you love but the other thing is you have also to listen to what your mind says and respect it. Because for example, 
I can think that I can lift 500 pounds in bench press, which I can't. My mind can, but my body simply cannot. My muscles cannot. So in the case over here is your spirit that he, he wants to trade already 1,000 shares on Tesla and do like three or four, five figures per day. But the brain is a muscle. So the brain needs a lot of practice. It needs a lot of rules. Brain needs a lot of like uh, understanding all the errors. And with time, you're going to get there. So first of all, I would say, tell yourself that you will take time to do this. And tell yourself that your goals are not to have goals. Don't have a goal like end of the year, I have to start making 1K per day. Or end of the next year, I have to make every single day a four figure. Don't put yourself goals because goals in trading raise a lot of stress and they force you to do errors. For example, I come to the trading station and I need to make money because I know I have bills. I know that people depend from me, but then there's no setup. There's no play. I trade, I lose money, and I feel even worse because not, not only I waited, but I even lost money that I don't have. If you take it, like every day that that I did very successful in life is because I really desired, and this is good. But if you take it with a step back, like when you do things that in nonchalance, Fabian knows this word very good. So really without any kind of stress about it, you do much better. It's like the same confidence that they say when you want to you know, get a girl, simply you don't show that you're too much into R and you attract her. When you are too much into our follower and do everything possible, you just pass like, you know, the non-confident person maybe like goes the opposite way. So over here, even if you love trading, even if you want to be so committed to it, trade like I don't have expectation to make money. Trade like only for the love to trade. And then the results are the end of the day. Because in this case, you take your trading with more relaxed uh, in a more relaxed way. It's strange to say it, but the more we raise and build the expectation and pressure into us, the more we will need to uh, perform under stress. And few people in this world can perform under stress at a high level. The majority of the people fail. So if you take this like, I don't care about the money, I don't care about what the market is going to do today. I know that I will execute my plan and I will execute my playbook. If I start putting my mind that in a chart, I'm only picturing certain moments to trade, that's it. An example was today on um, NQ that I was trading and I was over here with my wife. We, we look at NQ and we look at the Qs. I'm going to bring up one second. So that picture, the picture that we had in our mind this morning for me was that pre-market high or J lines. So when I saw the price getting to the J lines, on Bookmap was very tough to see on NQ and Qs if we had a big support. You know that on ES works good, on NQ and Qs looking for support on Bookmap is like knowing what your wife thinks when she says everything is okay. So the point for me over here is that when I saw that it was start bouncing, I risked. And now I know that I'm right away in my mind looking for 2R. So I knew exactly this point. In all the chart, pre-market high or J-line. That's it. That's the only thing. So my mind, I was focused in there. I was tunnel vision in the J-lines. And I was looking every single little dip that it was doing when I saw it, it's holding, okay, let me buy it. My risk was uh, 48 and 25, and then on Q, the same thing. And then this was a very good R return for me because it came like something like 5R. So the reason is you have to know what you're waiting, and this is part of my playbook. And then I simply wait that moment. If that moment doesn't come, we don't trade. 
since we had that setup, I didn't take, beside that little trade I took on Tesla, nothing anymore for the day. Nothing. What it means? It means that, of course, I'm not a scalper anymore. It means that I'm waiting for my playbook. But taking only one trade like this, you start putting size. Trust me, this could be your weekly play. So don't think now I have to take, which is good. I don't, don't uh, misunderstand. Don't think that we need to trade all of this because we're trading now small size. Because when I tell you we trade Tesla with 500, 1,000 shares or with 10, 20, 30 contracts, I had some traders that they were using futures, sorry, options, even futures, but they were loading contracts. They were trading for 30 minutes. They were taking between 5 and 15K every single day, and they were done. So we don't need to trade two hours, taking 30 trades. In the future, I prefer you take two, three trades, make $10,000, go away. That is the point of trading. Okay, so not staying over here. This doesn't mean the fact that you cannot trade like this. This is your style, and I like it. Okay, and I like it. But we need to uh, work very good with this, especially never show weakness. And... Always understand the price action very good, which I see that you're improving. Okay. Great. Thank you, Jay. You're welcome. Anybody else that would like to talk today? We can have one more. Jay, this is John S. I think one of the things that I'd like to do better is to hold my trades a little bit longer. I trade options and mostly Tesla. Uh, today, I traded the Qs for the first time. And... Um, as you were talking about the price patterns earlier, I know I made that mistake a thousand times where I looked at everything else but the price patterns, and I finally got my brain working on that. Uh, but I don't hold as good as I, I could hold, and uh, I'll scratch because I use mental stops, and if it turns negative, then I kind of talk myself into, we'll just hold a little bit more, hold a little bit more. So if I scratch out early uh, before I get to the loss or a small loss, then I seem to do a little bit better. So I don't, but then it takes, then when I get out, then I have to find another entry point, which it's hard to get a really precise entry point. You really have to search for it. Mm -hmm. So uh, first of all, I would say everything comes down to what is your target when you take these trades? And always having the four questions in your mind. What is the setup to trade? And I know what was the setup over here. But where's the target? Where is the stop loss? And once you're in a trade, do I still have green lights to hold the trade? This is the first thing that I would always ask every single time I take the trade. For example, reviewing half of the trades in mentoring of yesterday, I think nobody knew what the heck he was doing, what kind of setup was that? Second thing is, if we know that target is, for example, I don't know, that pre-market high, or in this case, we had, let's say, two or 250 because it was the previous resistance. Let's try to hold, I would say, the main core, or a little bit less than the main core for that target. But at key levels, scale out, even like, 20, 25%. I see over here, uh, how much you bought? Like uh, four, six contracts? I'm sorry, it was seven contracts. The two ones at the bottom, that was one and two. And then I did five contracts at the one, uh, it was roughly the entry was about 1.67 or something like that. Okay, okay, okay. So the point for me is try when you can and the setup is really good to take the early entry with more size, having a low risk, and then try to look for the exit at precise levels. You scale out. And then once you have, for example, your day trading, your scalping, so your trading has to be fast. We're not talking about long day trading or uh, swing trading. Try to use very good as a guide, the higher lows, like in this case, and also the 90 May to trail everything. 
there will never be the perfect, you know, exit that you buy the perfect dip and you sell everything to the perfect top. It doesn't work like that. Sometimes we'll have to scale out and uh, the trade will go further than when we think. So the last scaling out probably is going to be only with 20, 25%. And sometimes instead, what happens? You're going to scale out properly, but the trade will come back maybe near to break even. And the second half of your position, you will get out with a minimal win. This is part of trading. Okay. So my main point is find on your chart the key levels where you see in this case there's there's a supply or there's a demand according to if you take like puts or uh, uh calls you scale out those levels and then you use the higher lows or uh, lower highs and you use also the 90 May as a guide those are the three best tips that i can give you in order to trail thank you but i see john that the improvements are there and uh the conviction since you came over here improved a lot so i'm very happy about that it's uh not really about the size traders but it's about the the conviction and the confidence to enter in a trade john did a massive ton of work a massive ton of work for example he made a playbook himself uh, with stamps, I don't know if he has like 200. I mean, it seems like a Bible. Uh, I call it the Bible of John. Uh, like 200 pages of real paper. And now I think he's still doing another one. And so all the access that I give you, is not that I give you exercise so that you leave me in peace. I give you exercise because that exercise work. And then you start making four-figure days. Okay. Jay, only to ask you, this was a four-figure day? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you yeah. see, trader, it pays off. All right. Philippe, Tibor, Todd, Fabien, I know that you're all in that direction. Traders, time is up. I have another uh, two calls. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I will see you back tomorrow. Study and uh, have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, Jack.